I'm gonna survive the next 100 days as a piglin. And on day one, I spawned in as a baby piglin with five hearts. Hi, my son. We were at a kingdom in the nether, and I could hear a bunch of people cheering on for me. Dad, is this all for me? Yes, you are very special. Now make sure you stand tall and be proud. Go on, my child. I then went to the edge of the tower and noticed all kinds of different species, such as blazes, magma cubes, and wither skeletons, to name a few. And they were all excited to see me. I'm so confused. What's going on here? My son, you are next in the lineage to become king of the piglins after I am gone. That is why everyone in the nether is here to celebrate. Just then, my uncle Spark congratulated me in a very sarcastic way, and I could tell he wasn't very happy with this decision. I hope you become the greatest king to rule. After all, you are the son of the most beloved Piglin King. Thanks, uncle. Okay, enough talking. It's been a long day. Time for bed. As I was walking to bed, my father stopped me. Before you go, Bronzo, I want to give you my helmet. It has fire protection. Take it, son. Wow, thanks, Dad. Can I wear it? No, you can only wear it when the time is right. Go on now. Time for bed. I then laid in bed for a while, and as time passed by, I could hear my dad arguing with my uncle, so I decided to go investigate. I then noticed that my uncle was upset, knowing that I was going to become the next king. I should be next in line, not some small-brained piglin baby. Tradition dictates that I- To the overworld with tradition spark, one day my son will become the strongest and smartest piglin king to exist. Let's test that theory, shall we? I then saw uncle Uncle Spark punched Dad off the cliff into the lava below! Dad! Dad! How could you do this to my father? Your own brother! I started hitting him a few times, but he was much larger and stronger than me. Now that your father is gone, I will be the one to rule. You had better leave before I do what I did to your father. I couldn't believe it. My uncle was pure evil and trying to take over. So I ran away as fast as I could. On day two, I realized I needed to prepare myself if I wanted to defeat my uncle one day. I'm never going to let him get away with this. I then put on my golden helmet with fire protection on it that my dad had given me. This will always remind me of you, dad. I then found a crimson forest and started punching down some trees to make a wooden pick. Once I was finished working on my tools, I spotted a group of striders in the distance, so I decided to go approach them. Hello there. Just then, the striders recognized me as the king's son and gave me their condolences for my father's tragic death. At least he died in his sleep. Sleep? No, my uncle pushed him into a pit of lava. I saw it with my own eyes. Really? That's not what we heard from word of mouth. I then asked if they could help me, since I needed some better materials. How about you trade your golden helmet for a lifetime supply of stone, huh? I then thought about it as my dad gave it to me, but I decided to accept the offer since I really needed the supplies. Fine, let's do it. I then traded in my helmet, and they gave me a bunch of stone. Come back anytime! After the trade, I headed out to go craft some new tools with my stone, such as an axe, a pickaxe, a sword, and a shovel. Nice! Now I got what I need. I then found a little nook to rest in. For day three, I woke up and I was being attacked by a hoglin. Whoa, get away from me! I immediately started fighting against the Hoglin with my stone sword, and once I managed to kill them, I gathered their meat. It's definitely not safe here. I need to find a better place that I can call home. I then headed out to go chop down some more trees and make a small home out of crimson wood and stone. This place is going to be very cozy. I then placed a bunch of chests and furnaces around my base and brought out some Hoglin meat that I wanted to cook. Mmm, this is gonna be tasty. As I started cooking the Hoglin meat, I heard a knock on the door and felt hesitant about opening it, but I decided to do it anyways. Hello? Who's there? Just then, I saw that it was my father's trusted guard, and he was glad I was doing okay. Bronzo, I'm glad you're safe. I was worried about you. Yeah, I'm doing fine. How's everything back home? He then told me that Uncle Spark had been forcing the kingdom to live under his rule. Anyone that betrays him dies a painful death. That's terrible. Everyone is living in fear. I will get revenge and kill him. Not now. 
You'll need to get stronger first. Here's some items that can help for now. He then gave me some iron, and it was enough to make an entire tool set. Thanks! I can't stay much longer or they might notice I'm missing, but I will try to keep up with you when I can. Sounds good. Thank you for updating me. After he left, I crafted myself a full set of iron tools, including an axe, pickaxe, sword, and a shovel. Then I went to sleep. On days four and five, I woke up and I was starving. Oh yeah, good thing I got this cooked toglin meat. I ate it, and I grew into a full-sized piglin with eight hearts. Papa would be so proud. Speaking of growing, you should all click subscribe to help grow the channel so I can keep making awesome videos like this one. Suddenly, I was overcome with the urge to find gold. Need shiny golden stuff. I went mining for gold to make an entire golden armor set. Just then, a ghast appeared and started trying to blow me up. Ah, you can't have my gold. Its fireballs were blowing up blocks all around me. I tried to deflect the fireballs against the ghast, but it was no use. I had no choice but to make a break for it. I retreated into a safer area and waited until the ghast got bored and flew away. Phew, that was a close one. When I was sure the coast was clear, I went back home and crafted some gold armor with all my gold I had collected. Now I feel like a true piglin. On days six through eight, I decided to explore the nether, looking for answers to why my father was killed. Huh, what's over there? As I was exploring, I came across a group of wither skeleton knights attacking some poor hoglins. Hey, leave them alone. I ran over to help the hoglin, but I was too late. The skeletons had killed them all. So in return, I killed the skeletons to avenge the hoglins. This is for you, fellow pigs. Even though I killed one of your kind earlier, I was sad that none of them survived and I had failed to help them. But then I heard a little squeal from behind a rock. It was a baby hoglin. Hey, little buddy, are you okay? I'm so sorry, I couldn't save them. Do you wanna stay with me? Great, hey, you got a name? Oh, okay, I'm gonna call you Rita. I took Rita home with me and made her a room to stay in. This should do nicely. I explained the situation to Rita. All of this chaos is being caused by my uncle, but I was going to stop him and claim my rightful place on the throne. That would be amazing. Thank you. After that, we said goodnight to each other and went to bed. For the night of day nine, I had a dream about my uncle, Uncle Spark. I still don't understand. Why would you kill my father? Long before you were born, I was the rightful heir to this throne. I made the mistake of disobeying my father, and I was banished from this land. Since that day, I have always been seen as the lesser sibling. Why not live up to that title? What you did was wrong. You killed your own brother. And I would do it again if I could. I'm going to stop you, and I will take my rightful place as king. A good king who doesn't kill for fun. <laughs> Good luck with that. I am recruiting some of the most hated creatures in the nether to join me in my conquest. No! Just then, I snapped awake, seething with anger and ready for revenge. You won't get away with this, Spark. For days 10 through 12, I started wondering about the dream I had. What could this all mean? Just then, the trust guard visited and was wondering if I was doing okay. Hey, what's going on here? I heard a lot of yelling going on. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything is fine, but I had a nightmare. It was about my uncle. He then told me I didn't need to worry about him as some of the trust guards were playing planning an assault on him. Yeah, everyone hates him. So it's happening later today. Really? Well, I want to help you. I then asked him if I could join, and he seemed to be somewhat hesitant. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that, Bronzo. Well, you know what? I know your father would want you there. All right, then. He then told me to meet them at the Old Kingdom, where I was born, and their plan was to lure him into the courtyard. I'll be there. I then figured I needed some food for the battle, so I headed out to go looking for some. I need to be well fed for this fight. I looked around and saw some crimson and warped fungus, so I gathered some, thinking it would make a great stew. Mmm, I can't wait to make it. Then suddenly, some warped zombie piglins showed up and freaked 
freaked me out. Ah, where did you come from? I quickly pulled out my weapon and charged at the beast, trying to defend myself. And after I killed them, I ran back home. Once I made it back, I started cooking the fungus stew. And once I ate it, I had all the energy I needed to defeat my uncle. I even made a shield to help me during the battle. On days 13 through 15, I traveled back to the place where I was born to meet up with the guard and noticed he had two other piglins as backup. Prepare yourself, Bronzo. I'm going to call your uncle and then be ready to take him down. All right, I'm ready. Spark, come out, you traitor. My uncle Spark came out laughing at us and we all prepared to fight against him at the right moment. Look at you fools. You seriously think that you stand a chance against the king? Oh, and what a pleasant visit for my nephew. Hello, Bronzo. You'll pay for what you've done, Spark. Right here, right now. You don't deserve to wear that crown. Oh, really? We'll see about that. Spark then took out a splash potion and threw it on the guards, making them turn into rotten burning piglins. Why are you doing this? Have fun with those guys. The guards then screamed in pain and began attacking me, so I had no choice but to fight back. I fought until eventually I killed them all. How did you do that, Spark? Don't worry about it. Just then, he ran away, so I decided to follow him and see what he was going to do next. On day 16, and 17, I lost where my uncle went. What the heck? Where are you, uncle? I needed a way to track him down, so I went looking for answers. If I was Uncle Spark, where would I go? As I was searching, I found a little magma cube. Maybe they knew the answer. Hey, little guy, let me ask you something. Oh, me? Yeah, you. Have you seen an ugly looking piglin who wears purple? Actually, yes. They look to be running away from something or someone. Well, I need to know where they went. They've committed horrible crimes and need to be stopped. Well, I'll tell you, if you make me a small pool of lava, I want to relax in my own private area without all those annoying striders. Okay, fine. But then you have to tell me where he went. Deal. I began to make a small rectangle on the ground, and then I grabbed some lava with the iron bucket. This iron really came in handy. I placed the lava in the newly built area, and it was done. Okay, now tell me where he went off to. It's important. Nice, I like it. He went towards that lava stream. Thanks, enjoy your pool. On days 18 through 20, I found my uncle talking to a witch by another portal. That sneaky witch, I wonder what they're talking about. I overheard their conversation about an exchange of gold for powers. If you give me these powers, I can transform my piglin army into undead without having to replenish these potions. I will give you plenty of gold in return. <laughs> You're evil. I like it. No! How could he do such a thing? The witch then agreed to help and handed him a few potions as Spark handed over lots of gold ingots. Alrighty, don't go too crazy with that. It's extremely powerful. Or do with it what you want. I don't really care. I realized the witch had to die before all this got out of hand. So I followed her into the nether portal as soon as Uncle Spark walked away. All right, I can't let her get away. Once I crossed through the nether portal, I looked around and noticed that it was all weird and sunny here and the witch was nowhere to be seen. I then saw a gold ingot on the ground and realized she must have gone in that direction. Where is that crazy witch? I then began following the path, hoping it would lead me to the witch. On the days of 21 and 22, I started to feel kind of funny. Whoa, what's happening to me? I felt cold and suddenly I transformed. I was some kind of zombie version of myself. Whoa, what the heck? Why do I look like this? I decided it was either the witch or just the effects of being in the bright sunny world. I kept traveling and eventually I ran into a stone looking bird thing. What the heck are you? You are an overworld infiltrator and you must be terminated. It started attacking me and it had powerful knockback abilities and tons of health. I was worried my new zombified body wouldn't be able to take the blows, but eventually I won the fight. Huh, not bad, zombie pig. After the fight, I continued walking in search of the witch when suddenly I noticed another gold ingot. Aha, the witch must be this way. I then took the gold ingot with me and continued following the path. 
for days 23 and 24, the golden nugget path took me through a weird snowy region. Whoa, so cold and fluffy. I needed to protect myself while in this tundra, so I made a golden armor set. I also feel a bit warmer. I ran into a polar bear who was fishing through a hole in the ice. Hello there. Oh, hello, bro. Uh, sir, so great to meet you. Wow, you're really nice. Yeah, we don't get many visitors here in the tundra. Here, you hungry? He handed me some delicious looking fish. Thank you so much. Anything for a new friend. Also, a little tip. If you're heading this way, you're gonna wanna take the path through the mountains, not around. Thank you again. What a helpful bear. Should call you a care bear. I traveled through the mountain pass and suddenly the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I've got a bad feeling about this. I turned a corner and ran into a mutant snow golem and it was waking up from a nap. <laughs> I ran out as fast as I could and fell down some mountains along the way. And as I was finally getting through the mountains, I ran back into the polar bear. Ah, I can't believe my trap didn't work. Trap? Wait, you were trying to kill me? Of course I was, you fool. I was hired by the witch to take care of you before you got to her. You're a giant bear. Why don't you just kill me yourself? I was scared. I didn't want to hurt anybody, so I thought I could get someone else to do it for me. Wow, that's pretty sad. I called him a silly little coward and continued on my way around the mountains this time. On days 25 to 28, I found the witch and decided it was time to confront her. Hey, you freak. I know you're working with my uncle, but why? Well, with this much gold, I can rule the overworld. <laughs> Don't you know about his evil plans? If you help him, you're going to kill so many innocent piglins. That's fine with me. I'm rich. You crazy witch. If you don't stop this, I will kill you. The witch then got super angry and told me I had to leave immediately. You better go now or I'll throw one of my potions at you. I'm not leaving. Then you're gonna have to leave the hard way. She then drank a potion and turned into a netherite golem. Ah, you monster! There was no holding back. You don't deserve to live! The witch in her new form was powerful. When I would run away, she shot projectiles at me, and they really hurt. So that's what you needed all the gold for. You're a sad witch. Eventually, I outplayed the dumb witch and weakened her back into her true form. Ah, my powers! Why are you doing this to me? I'm not gonna stop fighting until you at least give me some answers. Well, what do you want to know, you crazy pig? Tell me where my uncle is hiding. The witch then told me that my uncle Spark was hiding in some nether fortress. One last thing, cast a potion onto me and turn me back into a regular piglin. The witch then threw some special brew on me and I turned into a living piglin again. Thanks, old hag. Go on now, leave me alone. Not so fast. You're gonna pay for your crimes. Hiya! I then killed the witch and headed out to go find the nether fortress. For days 29 to 33, I figured I could go find some nice materials since I was already here in the overworld. I know this place must have some rare finds. I then went to go mining for diamonds and got enough to make a full set of diamond tools and armor. Nice, just what I needed to stay protected. Before I knew it, I started getting attacked by some zombie villagers. Using my diamond sword, I fought against the undead villagers, and it took a couple of hits, but I was able to kill them pretty easily. Huh, not bad. Now I need to keep moving. After defeating the undead, I then traveled some more and came across the Badlands during my journey. Ooh, some terracotta. I'll have a good use for this later. I took some terracotta with me and then headed back towards the nether portal. On days 34 through 37, I was headed back home when I spotted a village. I had never seen a village in this world before, so I decided to go investigate. I came across a pen full of some strange creatures. Huh, these are funny looking hoglins. Just then, a villager approached me from behind. Oh, hello. Who are you and what are you doing here? It's okay. I mean you no harm. I'm a piglin and I'm on my way back to the nether right now. You better make it quick before I alert the town. Okay, I will. After he walked away, I noticed some delicious looking foods I had never seen before. I quickly grabbed some, but the villager noticed me. Thief, thief, call the iron golem. 
Oh no, I don't want any trouble. The villager called the iron golem, so I had to fight it. And it took a long time, but I eventually killed it. And all the villagers ran away from me in fear. So I took a look at the rest of their stuff. I did not find any gold, but I found a saddle and a soul speed enchantment book. I also grabbed their anvil to take back to my base. I then left the village and eventually made it back to the nether portal. On days 38 through 40, I was visited by my uncle at my base. Finally, I found the runaway prince. What are you doing here, Spark? This. Suddenly, he summoned a bunch of zombie piglins to attack me and disappeared. I was outnumbered and they swarmed around me. Luckily, I was able to overpower and kill them all. I couldn't believe I was being forced to kill some of my own kind. Sorry, Jeff. After the battle was over, I decided to make myself an armor stand and hang up my gold armor. No more damage for you. Next, I decided I wanted to expand on my base. Rita helped some too. I expanded downward into a basement and I also built up a second floor. So much room for gold. I went out and found some glowstone and added that to the base for decoration and lighting. So feng shui. I decided to turn the basement into a vault to fill with all of my gold. After a long day of work, Rita told me she was off to look for information on my uncle and his plans. Okay, be careful. I wished Rita luck and headed off to bed. On days 41 through 43, I woke up and decided I needed more gold, so I went mining. I need to stock up on as much gold as possible. I then gathered enough gold and turned it into gold blocks. Ah, so shiny. I love it. After making them into blocks, I started placing them in my basement to fill up the area. Wow, all this shiny gold makes me feel like the king I truly am. I even thought I could use this gold to turn food into golden versions of themselves. So I got some melons and some carrots and voila, nice golden food. The vegetable looked so tasty. So I ate some and stored the rest for later. All right, what's next on the agenda? Oh yeah. I then started mining for some nether quartz. And once I gathered enough, I smelted it and refined it some more until it turned into quartz glass. My windows could use an upgrade. I then started replacing the windows with quartz glass and my base was already looking much better. Oh yeah. Yeah, this place looks cool. For days 44 and 45, I wanted to work on my skills and test out all my weapons. There must be a good opponent out here somewhere. As I started searching for a good opponent, I figured I could also stock up on food along the way. Ooh, my stomach's rumbling. I need to be well fed before I fight any monsters around here. I found some hoglins nearby, so I charged at them with my sword and killed them for their meat. Nice, let's eat up. I ate their delicious meat and now felt like I had enough energy to see my full potential in my upcoming battle. After my feast, I continued on my search and finally found the perfect target to test out my skills on. Aha, some rhizomes. There were so many of the rhizomes covering the area. So I began fighting them, but they were very agile and fast, even though they looked pretty big. Feel my rage. I fought as hard as I could using my weapons and moving as fast as possible, but I still felt like they were overpowering me. Yeah, Die, you monsters! I managed to kill them all, but after the battle, I felt extremely weak and realized I needed more training if I was going to defeat Spark one day. Ugh, that was pretty tough. Let me heal up. I ate some more meat and started feeling pretty defeated, but I knew there was room for improvement. I wish Dad was here to help me. He was a great fighter. I started reminiscing about my father and wanted to go visit him, so I headed off to the graveyard. On days 46 through 49, I went to the tomb of my father to visit and mourn for him. Dad, I wish I knew what was happening. Everything is going wrong, but I'm working on it. Suddenly, I saw the ghost version of my father appear and he started talking to me. My son, you do not need to worry. You have good fate in your hands. Dad, I can't believe I'm actually talking to you right now. I need to tell you about Uncle Spark. He's taking over. I already know and it's what I expected from him. After all, he's always been evil and has hated me since the day I was born. I then asked dad for some advice as I needed answers in order to plan my revenge. Be careful, son. I believe in you and I know you can take him down, but Spark is very tricky. You need to attack at the right time or you could end up being the one killed. 
I need to outsmart him then. Thanks, Dad. I know I can do this. You're going to be king. Remember that, and don't give up hope. Also, there's a glow silk bow left in a chest under my grave for you. Use it against Uncle Spark and redeem me. You got it, Dad. I won't let you down. I will be the next great king. I then said goodbye to my father, and before I knew it, he vanished away, and I began digging around his tomb and found a glow silk bow, along with an absurd amount of golden spectral arrows at my disposal. This must be the kingdom's lifetime supply of arrows. On days 50 through 53, I started making a statue to commemorate my father. This statue will be for you, Dad. I'll always remember you. I began by working on the bottom half of the statue, building each of the legs first, when suddenly Rita arrived. Oh, hey, Rita. Welcome back. I'm making a statue in honor of my father. Want to help me build it? <laughs> We worked on the legs for some time and added all the necessary details to make it look like my father. It looks really nice, Rita. We've done a good job. Rita then told me something very surprising about my uncle. <laughs> Sure, go ahead. Rita then told me that apparently she heard my uncle talking about my cousin. Wait, what? I didn't even know I had a cousin. <laughs> Really? Do you know how I could get there? Rita then handed me a map, and it was useless. I couldn't read it. Rita, this doesn't help me at all. Maps don't work in the nether. <coughs> After thanking Rita and taking the map with me, I headed out to go get some answers from my cousin. On days 54 to 58, I followed my instincts and traveled through the nether. I better keep my eyes peeled for any weird creatures around here. Sure enough, I ran into a nether guardian. Stay back, you freak, or you're gonna die. It was vicious and extremely fast running at me. I decided I couldn't avoid it. I had no choice but to try and kill it. Ugh, take that. It was too much for me, and I felt myself grow weak really fast. Luckily, a piglin came out and helped me fight against it and after some time we finally won the battle i can't believe it it's true you're still alive it was my cousin i was so surprised to see how similar we looked and i immediately told him that i didn't even know i had a cousin i know i'm kent it's nice meeting you my dear cousin i've remained hidden for so long i didn't expect you to know me well i came to find you i then informed him about his father's plan to take over and i could tell he already knew it was coming i expected that my father's been evil ever since I could remember my first memory. When I was a baby, he killed my own mother. That's why I left the kingdom to get away from him and live a more peaceful life. I'm very sorry for your loss. I want to stop him before he causes any more damage. What do you think I should do? You should be sneaky and attack him when he least expects it. After all, he's just a fool with no strategy. I'm sure you can beat him. I don't think I'm strong enough. I need to work on my skills. I'm actually pretty good at fighting. Maybe I can teach you a few moves. I then asked him if he could train me so I could hopefully take down my uncle one day. Yes, I will train you. Follow me to my home so we can rest for the night. Our training will start tomorrow morning. Awesome. I then followed him down a path that led to his home. And once we arrived at his base, we both went to bed for the night to rest up for our big day tomorrow. On days 59 through 62, I was awoken by my cousin and ready to go do our training. Early Peglin gets the gold. I'm excited to make some improvements. Teach me everything you know. First, we'll do some gold resistance training. What? Why with gold? Well, we are too often distracted by it, but this will challenge you to stay focused. He then began throwing gold around me and I immediately went for it, but he stopped me before I could grab any. Focus. Do not get tempted by the gold. Let's try this again. Uh, it's so tempting. Okay, I'll try even harder this time. He then dropped more gold, and I resisted picking it up this time. Well done. Now let's do some running around soul sand to build up your speed. I then began running around the sand, and once I increased my speed, he told me I was now ready to run on netherrack. Okay, I'll give it everything I got. All right, now that you're much faster and more focused, you're ready for a final battle against me. We began battling against each other, and my cousin was strong and agile. But thanks to my new skills, I fought against him with all my might and eventually bested him. Nice, I think you're ready. Go defeat my father for me, will you? I'll try my best, Kint. Thank you for your training. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. Of course, pay me another visit soon. 
Oh, also, take this. It was a gift from my father, but it actually belonged to your father. He then handed over a Piglin King sword that was forged from Piglin steel. Wow, thank you. This will come handy in battle. I'll see you soon, Kent. Good luck, Bronzo. After all that training, I felt more comfortable about taking down my uncle. So I took the sword with me and headed back home. For days 63 through 66, I made it home and Rita was there to greet me. Hey, Rita, anything to report? Really? Well, where is it? Thank you for the information. It will be very useful in defeating him. But first, I've got some other important business to take care of, like working on this statue. I grabbed some of the terracotta I collected and got to work on building my statue. Rita helped me build too. Rita and I worked on the statue for a while, completing the torso and arms. Looks great. Thanks for the help, Rita. Now that that work was done, I decided to go check out my uncle's base for myself. As I was heading in the direction of my uncle's base, I quickly ran into a rotten great warrior. What the heck? What are you? They immediately started attacking me and they were throwing netherite at me. Plus they were really fast. Luckily their health was low and I was able to take care of them pretty quickly. I'm sorry brothers. It dropped some netherite scrap. I couldn't believe the types of monsters my uncle was turning people into. I can't defeat him fast enough. I need to defeat him soon. On days 67 through 70, I arrived at my uncle's base and it was surrounded by lava with no way to get in. Mm -hmm. If only I knew someone who could get me across the lava. Wait, that's it. I remembered my Strider friends. They could walk on lava easily. I headed back to the Striders to see if they could help me out. Hey guys, I've got a bit of a lava problem and I was hoping you could help me. What can we do for you? I need to ride on one of your heads across the lava to my uncle's base. No way, too dangerous. Hmm, what's in it for us? I'll bring you a bunch of warped fungus, your favorite snack. All right, I'll do it for 50 warped fungi. Deal. I immediately ran off to start collecting warped fungi. After collecting 50, I grabbed one extra and crafted a warped fungi on a stick. As I began heading back towards the striders, I ran into a warped enderman. Whoa, you look sick. <laughs> Uh-oh, it immediately started attacking me. It put up a pretty good fight, but eventually I was able to take it down. Looks like it was infected by the warped fungus after my uncle sent it after me. I should get away from these, quick. I headed back to find the Striders as fast as possible. On days 71 through 74, I returned to the Striders and gave them the 50 warped fungus. All right, saddle up. I put the saddle on the Strider and hopped on. Oof. You're a heavy pig. All right, get moving, please. I finally made it to my uncle's base and hopped off the strider. I'll wait here for you. Good luck. I started exploring the base and there was soul fire everywhere. I got a bad feeling about this. Just then, a group of wither skeleton knights ambushed me. Whoa, not fair. Even though they snuck up on me, I was still able to take care of them easily. I think I'm ready to take on my uncle. Just when I thought it was over, a mutated wither skeleton emerged. Whoa, what is that? It's huge. I began fighting it and it was really strong. It had crazy leaping abilities. Ah, I can't do this. It was too powerful and I had to retreat. I ran out of the base and hopped on the strider. Hurry, go, go. The strider and I made it back to safety. This isn't over. I will try again when the time is right. I just have some more preparations to do. I left the Striders and returned to my base to rest. On days 75 through 78, I realized I needed an armor upgrade. So I headed out to go mining for ancient debris and gold. All right, let's see what we can find. After I gathered enough materials, I headed home and saw my uncle with Rita. Hey, get away from my friend. Hello, Bronzo. Good to see you. He pulled out a weapon, so I figured he would try to fight me right then and there. I've come too far for you to try and stop me now, kid. I don't know about that, Spark. You're a fool, and you're ruining the lives of many innocent people. You don't know anything about what it's like to be a king. Well, I'm gonna find out once I kill you. Let's see about that. 
But first, your little spy here will pay. Just then, he turned Rita into a mutant hoglin, and she started losing control of herself. No! Rita! I had no choice but to fight against her, now that she wasn't Rita anymore. <laughs> Good luck with that. He then disappeared and left me to fight against my own best friend. So I pulled out my glow silk bow and spectral arrows and went for it. I'm sorry, Rita. I don't want to do this to you. I fought against Rita, who used her powerful strength to hit the ground, making me fall, and then gave me a couple of more hard punches. I then used my king sword to slay her down. He's taking everyone from me. Curse you, Uncle Spark! On days 79 through 84, I went searching for soul sand so I could add more details to the statue. I'm gonna make sure this statue looks just like a piglin with every detail I need. I quickly started digging and found some soul sand, soil, and even some soul stone. Then suddenly, as I continued digging, I started getting attacked by embodies. Whoa, back off. There were souls that would crawl towards me in numbers. So I had to be careful and fight back. Uh-oh, I must have awakened the dead. I fought against the embodies with all of my weapons and eventually i finally slayed them all right i got enough of the materials i need let's go work on this statue after the fight i headed back home with my new materials and began working on the rest of the statue with only a little bit left in order to complete it now for some final touches i then placed every necessary block in order to add most of the details left on my statue there's still some more left to do in order to make this perfect i took a break and decided to continue my statue at another time this one's for you dad. I headed back to the base, and on the way, I was approached by some rotten great warriors that dropped nether scrap and gold ingots when I fought against them. You know what? My armor could use an upgrade. It's already getting weaker. I then decided it was a good time to use the materials I had collected from mining to upgrade my armor. So I arrived at my base and built a smithing table, and then used my diamond armor and some netherite ingots to make a full set of netherite armor. On days 85 through 88, I entered the basalt region. After a bit of wandering, I was attacked by a pair of basalt giants who seemed to be guarding this land. These guys were crazy huge, and they packed a serious punch. Oof, that one's gonna hurt in the morning. It was a hard battle, but eventually I was able to get the upper hand and took one of them out. Now that I wasn't outnumbered, it was easier to take out the second one. If I can beat those guys, I must be ready to take on my uncle soon. I continued into the region and came across a black stone dwarf. Hello, you're not gonna attack me, are you? No way, I would never challenge someone who made it piece the base of giants. Yeah, they were pretty tough. Plus, I can tell you're not one of those zombified piglins that have been prowling around. My uncle created those. He's an evil tyrant, and I'm going to take him down. Will you join me in the fight? Sorry, can't help you there. Not a very good fighter. But if you bring me four blaze rods, I can give you an armor upgrade. Sounds like a deal. For the days of 89 and 90, I was starting to get lost. Now where the heck are we? This place is strange and confusing. As I continued to search for the fortress, I ran into some piglins who seemed very disheartened. Hello, fellow piglins. I'm happy to see you guys are okay. We're not doing too good, actually. The piglins told me that my uncle's rule had been awful. There were piglins everywhere, starving, and some of them even started turning into zombie piglins. We don't know how much time we have left. Don't worry, I'll go get you some food. These times are rough out here. It's the least I can do to help. Thank you, be careful. As I was leaving to go get them some food, I started hearing them make weird zombie noises. Oh no, it might be too late now. The piglins had now converted into zombies, so I quickly had to kill them before they could cause any harm. I'm sorry about this, guys. I whipped out my sword and fought against the zombie piglins. And once I killed them all, I started feeling awful. I wish I could have helped them sooner. After the fight, a baby piglin showed up and he seemed very lost. So I started talking to them to figure out what was going on. Hey there, little piglin. Where's my family? I brought the food. I felt so bad knowing that he went to help his parents and now they were gone. He was never going to see them again. I'm sorry, little one. Your family is in a better place now. But they told me to go find food. Where did they go? 
Don't worry. Take this for now and protect yourself. Everything will be all right very soon. Oh, okay. I'll just wait for them here. Poor little baby piglin. He had no clue. I gave him some of the gold I had so he could make weapons and then headed out to continue with my mission. On days 91 through 93, I needed to get four blaze rods to complete the dwarf's request. Once I reached the nether fortress, I found several blaze and started fighting against them to retrieve their rods. Over here, you fiery monsters. All right, I got three, just one more. Once I got what I needed, I made my way towards the Blackstone Fort. And on the way, a bunch of fulligans started charging at me. Ah, what are these freaks? They looked like tiny scorpions made of fungus. So I brought out my sword and fought against them. Come here, you weirdos. There were many of them coming my way. But luckily, they weren't too hard of an opponent. Nice, let's keep moving. I need to get back to the dwarf and give him those rods. I then finally returned back to the dwarf with all the rods he had requested. Ah, you bank. Hand them over, will you? He also wanted me to hand over my armor, and I honestly felt pretty reluctant to trust him, but I really needed the upgrade. All right, here you go. The dwarf then took my armor and walked up to his golden anvil and started crafting something. Hold on, here you go. He then handed me back a full set of divinity nether armor, and it even had gold infused pieces on it. Whoa, this is incredible. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck out there. I thanked him and then headed out of the basalt base with my new armor that made me feel invincible. I exited the basalt region on days 94 through 96, and I was immediately greeted by an awful ghast. Ugh, it looks awful. It started attacking by shooting at me with its gun, so I fired back with my glow silk bow and spectral arrows. Take that. Its attacks were really strong, and it was a tough battle, but I ended up winning in the end and it even dropped an awful gun. Ooh, I'll keep this for later. After the battle was over, I walked around and ran into my cousin, Kint. Kint, hey cuz, what are you doing here? Bronzo, I saw that fight, it was amazing. I'm so proud of how far you've come. You're becoming a strong warrior, just like your father. I'm here to share some news with you. Well, I'm just glad to see you're alive and well. What's going on? We don't have much time. My father has gone mad king mode and he's killing everyone in his path. Here, take my special golden nugget. Thank you, Kent. That means so much to me. Just then, a piercing arrow came out of nowhere and killed Kent. No! I looked in the distance and saw that it was my uncle. How could you? Your own son! I got out of there quickly and reached a safe spot out of my uncle's range and decided I needed to visit home one final time. On days 97 through 98, I was heading back home when I noticed some Nillian getting mugged by some weird double-headed looking wither skeletons. I should go help out. I decided to intervene since the Nillion looked helpless. You gotta get through me first. As soon as I threatened the wither skeletons, they brought out an ax made of tungsten to fight against me. Take that, you skeleton. The skeletons were an easy opponent. And now that I had improved my skills, I could kill anything that came my way. After the fight, I went up to the Nillion to make sure they were safe. Hey there, little guy. Are you okay? I'm on my way to end all of this chaos in the nether. They then gave me some root scrambles. Um, thank you. You're welcome to come home with me so you can be safe. I took the root scramble with me, and then we made our way home to give Rita a proper grave. I'm sorry, Rita. You didn't deserve to die like this. I then crafted a sign that said, R.I.P. Little Rita. I'll always remember you. I'm going to take him down, Rita. Don't you worry. I thought it was time to add the final touches to my entire statue and make it come to life. So I used some gold blocks and different shades of brown and pink blocks I found to make it work. I had the Nillion help me with the building. Looks just like me. On day 99, I headed back to my uncle's base for the last time. I approached the Striders to take me across, but before leaving, I made a speech. Attention lava creatures! I am once again crossing the lava to defeat my uncle, the fake Piglin King, once and for all! 
before I go, I need you all to make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can see new videos when they come out. Okay. Will do. I crossed the lava once again and confronted the mutant wither skeleton. This time, I was really prepared. I have you now. This was a hard battle and made the biggest jumps while I tried hitting him. But this time, I came out on top. I continued into the base to confront the false king. I finished ascending the tower on day 100. I knew Spark was up there. Finally, vengeance would soon be mine. I walked through the double doors to see him cowering. Murderer! You wouldn't kill your own uncle, would you? No! I'm going to give you a chance. The chance you never gave my father. What do you mean? You can run away. Run away now. And don't ever come back. <laughs> You really are just like your father. Rich is why I cannot let you live. Before I could react, he lunged at me with his sword. He was so fast, and he had a Piglin King sword of his own, which was infused with his royal blood to make it even stronger. Why didn't I think of that? I used the sword of the Piglin King to slash and strike at him. He's too fast. I can't get a clean shot at him. Rise, Piglins, rise. Do my bidding. Spark has summoned a horde of undead to overwhelm me. Yeah, there's so many of them. The undead Piglins swarmed me, and I was overwhelmed. Ah, why don't you die again? Eventually, I was able to pick them off one at a time. That was close. Once again, my uncle and I were the only ones left. Is that all you got? No! There's plenty more where that came from. Not if I can help it. I ran up to my uncle, and I was able to knock the Divinity Staff out of his hand. After evening the odds, I was able to dodge the blasts of the Evoker Fangs and corner him. I was able to overpower him and dealt one final blow.